Okay, so I'm gonna give you a walking tour so that when you get back, you'll know what stuff is. Obviously, your hosta and lily of the valley bed. There's some ajuga in the back there, starting with the mulch into the daylilies. The first plant here is a purple sage, and it'll get a nice bushy size, much the same size as the lily of the valley, or the, the daylilies. Anyway, they're about to pop, so they should be blooming by the time you get home. Next up, we have, for ground cover, we have a golden oregano. And moving on up, another golden oregano with the Mexican primrose, which will fill in and be lush eventually. Very slow to start, but once they get going, you get crazy. Uh, so, golden oregano with the bright green of the Mexican primrose. And then we have the purple sage with the Mexican primrose. Moving into your kale bed. I'm not stepping on anything, this mulch is perfectly fluffed. Uh, <laughs> so, the golden creeping myrtle, otherwise known as Vinca, <laughs> is doing just fine on the inside of the bamboo and Cecil twine, totally untouched are your veggies. So the deer have not been back. I did find evidence on the other side, but not in the bed, just on, they've just been eating weeds on the side over there. So it looks like they're probably pretty much done coming up here. I shouldn't say that, it would jinx me. Anyway, so this guy is Japanese giant purple mustard, and they are a spicy, spicy green. There's another one, Let's see if it'll focus way over there. Your blueberries have blueberries on them. Blueberry bushes. This is your golden elderberry. He'll get a nice good nice size to him. The flowers are Cleome. They are well they're not considered an edible but they are a deer resistant uh, native wildflower. So they are spiny and sticky so the deer don't like them and they'll get about 36 inches tall, so about the same size as that bush that remains, the one remaining bush. Anyway, uh, in front of that we have beard tongue, that's a medicinal, and then all the way from here and around is kale. So all 42 plants are right along that rope line, so if the deer walk up they'll smell the rope and be like, nope, that doesn't smell good. Your Budlea, or butterfly bush, right here. It's going to get nice and big this year. Sleep, creep, and leap. It's a three-year term, so this is his year to creep. Down here, another medicinal. We have yarrow. And your lavender. More yarrow. Picked up more lavender, so one, two, three. Uh, so two little babies. One's doing just fine and blooming. The, well, the golden mop is doing pretty good. Little guy over here got filled in, take, taken out and filled in. I don't know if those hookers, you can see the pile. Those hookers were drowning in the pot in the back. So I replanted them out here, hoping they'll, hoping they'll revive, but it doesn't. I'm not, not making any bets on it. Let's just say that. This guy's doing just fine. Our Dianthus, the little, little carnation pinks. Uh, I did trim him up, and the big problem, I don't know what it is with this side of the house, but it doesn't seem to drain. I, I, have, I haven't had the water on at all, and I'm not gonna hook it up, I don't think. We're, we're gonna see how long we can go without turning it on, because this bed's just holding so much moisture, and that may be the fact that we had so much rain, I don't know because the other bed, the other two beds, don't have that problem at all. And one is just rock solid, acts like it's clay, and it doesn't make sense because it's brand new soil that we put in. But it's just dense. It's like compacted or something. Anyway, walked the mulch. This was the problem. His, his entire crown was buried, so he was suffocating. That's why, why the other plants lost it so the mulch has been very carefully placed so please 
please, please, please try not to compact it or move it. Um, unless you have to, unless you want to plant something, by all means. But otherwise, let's, let's keep it where it is so it's not suffocating things other than weeds. Uh, the daisy bush and daisies are doing just fine. If I recall correctly, these are red daylilies coming in. And this year, since I put the deer stuff up, they're letting them bloom. Last year they were eating them every single time. I couldn't get a single bloom. So they're doing good. Put a little juga in here as ground cover. That black scallop seems to do really well. What I find is the, uh, the variegated purple and white tooth ajuga did not do well at all. Um, so it's been taken out entirely because it just looked lame. <laughs> Honestly. However, the chocolate tooth does just fine. I think because variegation um, has to do with chlorophyll and the more variegation there is, the less sunlight they can handle. And so now that this is actually a full sun bed, they were just frying. They could not produce enough food for themselves. So they just kind of strolled. Anyway, front side of this bed, we have the Liriope border. And of course, your kale is mixed in with the perennials that are going in. And we also have some Cleome. That's what those colors are. There's a red one there. There's a, let's see, red one there. There's a red and green one over here. Anyway, they're, they are shade loving, so hopefully they do well. These guys are doing pretty good so far, So, but they'll have some variegated foliage. They're not known for their flowers, but you'll have some foliage color pops going on in here. Speedwell Veronica is doing just fine. Also another medicinal. This year, instead of the variegated ajuga being in here, I've made this a triangle of black-eyed Susans. So you have that triangle, then you have another triangle over here with the speed well. And so far so good. The hostas have not been nibbled. And your asters are coming up right here. The ferns are doing fantastic. I want them to become a huge colony because they're fluffy and lovely. On the other side, your still bee is just starting to bloom. So you should be, I think you'll be back in time to see it. And once the bear's britches, the, the acanthus mollus, the thing that uh, was leaning out in the road, will tie that back so that it can go upright and bloom instead of trying to get you. <laughs> but the ferns all seem to have done quite well. Look at that painted fern. He's awesome. And coming around again to the next bed. I put a new edge on this. Um, just a topical edge really but the I'm not sure if it's the lawnmower or if it was the bunnies that ate the uh, liriope over here but it's all along the, the edge <laughs> so I'm not sure it could be bunnies it could be the lawnmower who knows but it was all inter intermingled this is your Hakona Koa that one's the one that's struggling he's the one who got buried in the mulch last year <laughs> so He's still there, he's struggling, but this is what he'll look like eventually, and eventually there'll be a line, a nice little curve of this Japanese grass. Again, he's blooming, yay, and they're not eating him. I should really knock on wood. The azaleas are doing just fine, and got a lot of new growth on them. On this side, the coleus, <laughs> is installed into the diamonds that are that were white but they're too much sun so i'm hoping that the coleus will be fine because it can take some sun but annuals are cheap and they'll fill in nicely they should be 12 to 18 inches tall so you'll have a a variegated thing going on here a variegated variation thing there we go <laughs> variable all the varies it's just all the varies um, day lily in the back, he's doing good. So I just went ahead and cleared and mulched out to the gate, even though we can't get in on that gate, but you know, it looks better. There's a dead dog in the drive, as you can see. 
It's uh, it's bored to death. <laughs> it's ready to go. Then on the other side, walked back the ivy out of here. You have your your tom thumbs now in the barrels. This is bronze fennel. This is pineapple sage. Yum. In the front, you have super tunias that will spill out over the front. And the lavender from last year was perennial, so we kept him. Coolie coolie. Everybody looks good. They're going to get enough sun there. Those little pickets. You can see they're stained. That's the bone sauce on there. So they'll keep their noses out of there. And for the most part, the irrigation has been buried. I'm going to stop for today because I have more planting to do. Um, but I do want to come back and finish up this edge line. Weed this a little bit more. What's in here it is uh, invasive <laughs> and it's hiding. So what I was telling your assistant was it looks like the Vinca, which is innocuous, no problems, lovely. But the Euonymus that's actually out in this main bed, I believe John runs that over to keep it tidy with the lawnmower which is great, but every time Vinca, every time Euonymus breaks, this stuff will root from every single break. So, got to get it out by the root. And yeah, he's definitely, so he, he disguises himself. This one is Euonymus, right? This one is Vinca. Looks just like him, doesn't it? So yeah. This is, this is how it gets its unfair advantage. It's called Winter Creeper. And they still sell this stuff. It drives me crazy. I spend my life tearing it out. Anyway. <sighs> it's a horrible, evil, evil vine. Kills things. Much like kudzu. Uh, anyway. So it's still, there's still some in there because it's creeping around the corner from out in the big bed. But I'm going to get it all the way out of here and get finish one more bag of mulch through here just so that along the sidewalk we have it nice and tidy like this. And then out front, I have one more bag of mulch to spread. Sorry, it's a really long video, but you'll know where everything is, and it's not a weed. Out here, we I just put in, and they're kind of limp because they just got transplanted, um, but it's supposed to rain. Uh, so the daylilies, the super tall daylilies that we have over the office, I've got those in there now with the oak leaf hydrangea. <coughs> and then I put in a pile of the the pink uh, Mexican primrose in here. And so the leftovers from this bag will go over to the um, tree line sidewalk so we don't have to buy anymore. This is going to be just plenty. But I'm going to leave it there and block the weeds with it until I can get back and weed that. And there you have it. Mission accomplished. Your house as botanical garden. Yeah. Sure looks like a botanical garden to me. I love it. Okay, bye.